In this video, I'm gonna have a go at something that I've never actually done before. And that is, I'm gonna use my front mount winch to winch myself backwards. I reckon it's gonna be intriguing to see how it goes. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. So I'd love it if you could hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get all the notifications as well. How's this going to work? You see, having a front mounted vehicle recovery winch is fantastic. And many of us do have them on our vehicles and they're powerful, I mean, let's face it, it'll just about turn your four wheel drive into a bulldozer which is cool if you want a bulldozer. But if you don't want a bulldozer, well, it's not so cool. Anyway, so I've got a 12,000 pound winch on the front of this vehicle, and right at the moment, it is not going to take me that way very easily. So I want to go that way. So the way we're going to do this is a technique that I've never actually tried, but I've always wondered about. Today's the day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the winch cable and I'm going to run it underneath the vehicle and out the back of that tree, back over there, and use the winch to pull me backwards. Now, I need to give you a disclaimer. This could very well damage your vehicle. So you need to decide for yourself whether this is a procedure that would work on your vehicle. You could potentially bend your bull bar back. Um, you could potentially damage some items under your, your vehicle. You could potentially break your, your winch cable if it fouled on a bolt or another sharp edge. So you need to make sure that the underside of your vehicle works because this is, a, it's kind of sketchy what we're going to be doing. All right, so my vehicle, is pretty well set up for it. The only places I believe the cable is going to contact is the two differential housings, which are rounded steel, and um, potentially the steering damper. And, uh, but it's going to only be very light touch on the steering damper. I think that's going to be okay. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to check it. I'm just going to have to do it and see how we go. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got to get that hook out. Now, obviously that's jammed in there. So we'll just reach out. All right, at least the vehicle's not sitting on it. Uh, might have to do the crawl down through the front here. Uh, so you can see, uh, it's awkward. And obviously, if you had to use this technique and you were buried in a mud hole, <laughs> you get your wife to do it. And if you're a lady wheeler, you get your bloke to do it. Because let's face it, you don't want to get muddy, do you? All right, I'm gonna feed out a bit of slack. All right, so we'll bring this, give me some cable, because I think it'll be easier to do that out here. All right, let's get, I need to get enough to go under the car and out the back, so. And then what I got a is a tree up over there that I'll use as my anchor point. Okay, just a tip, eh? You'll notice I haven't got the car running, the engine running, so I'm just using battery power. So, never use too much. Well, you'll have a flat battery. Okay. All right, so that's cable now under the front diff. And we'll come up top and get up under the back diff. Oh, there we go. All right. All right, tree trunk protector, bow shackle. So this little bad boy over here should give me a nice anchor point. Always, please, look after the bush. You're out in the bush because you love the bush, aren't you? So always use your tree trunk protector. And always get it down as low as you can on the tree where the tree's strongest. So you'll notice that I'm using a bunch of Factor 55 gear. They gave me the gear to use, but uh, they don't pay me any money or anything like that. Okay, so I love their gear, mind you, I must say. Not only looks great, it's uh, top-notch stuff. Okay, so these Ultra Hooks, they've got this really cool latch pin. So that pin lives in the hook, don't drop it goes up in there and uh, and then that latches that latch closed you know it's perfect then so it's not going anywhere all right time to have a crack all right so I can't put my seatbelt on because I want too much of an angle 
Now the way I'm going to do this, I am just going to let the winch do all the work. I'm not going to drive because the reality is the Bundy would drive straight out of this. All right, so winch in. All right, there she's taking tension. There you go, she's starting to go back. Look at that. Easy as, how cool is that? Now your winch won't have as much power as it normally would because it's going to have a lot of frictional loss going across the fair lead. Because that fair lead is going basically backwards on itself. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Give her a bit of rev. Come on girl. There you go. Look at that. So that's here. Easy, that's working. Woohoo! I love trying out new things. There you go, we're up. That worked an absolute treat. How good was that? Worked an absolute treat. It was, it, from the vehicle seat, like driver's seat, it actually felt as though I was doing a forward winch. But come around and have a look at this front fair lead. Look at how the, the cable has to come around this, the fair lead. I mean, this is why having a good quality fair lead would be important. If ever you're going to do this sort of recovery, you want one that's got a really nice soft radius like this unit here. But that point there is a huge stress riser and that cable's suffering hugely going over that. That's where you'll lose a bunch of the winch's power and it's also one of the places where the cable could um, break in this scenario. So this is really one of those things where you go, I can do it if I have to but it would really be one of those last resort type of scenarios. Now, the other thing I want to show you is this. See here, this flat area, that was created by the cable being uh, pulled into the dirt. If this was a rock shelf and you were doing this, you'd want to put a blanket or an air damper or some sticks, something on there to protect your cable so your cable doesn't get cut by the rock. I didn't do anything in this one because I knew this was soft dirt and the cable would be okay in the soft dirt. But with these synthetic ropes, that's one of their weaknesses that they do cut quite easily. Obviously, if you were running a steel cable, it's a different scenario for this regard, but the steel cable's not going to enjoy going around that at all. You're going to destroy your steel cable. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. It was certainly good fun having a crack and doing it and seeing, hey, it works on Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trials.